This video is sponsored by Renaissance Bank, the best bank in the South. Check them out online at renaissantnation.com. Hey, what's up? Matt Wyatt here. I know I'm a few days late on this, almost a week late, or, or at least in terms of we had the Iron Bowl about a week ago, but uh, better late than never, huh? Film study, Iron Bowl, 11 plays from Auburn's win over Alabama. Now we take a look. Now, disclaimer, I've been really sick, and you may can tell in the sound of my voice, so if that's off-putting, I apologize. I really do. I'm trying to fight through it, so thanks for watching. 11 plays from uh, Auburn's win over Alabama in the Iron Bowl. It was kind of a classic game, so much fun to watch. Jalen Waddle for Alabama is phenomenal, but Auburn just made so many plays. Let's get into it. First touchdown of the game for Auburn. Going to read the edge. Quarterback is. Sees him go inside, keeps it for a touchdown. Watch it from behind. And you go, how could this play work? Because Alabama had numbers, right? Um, Auburn has a tight end in the game, so they got a a six-man front, but it's six versus eight guys. So four down linemen for Alabama. Give them a four-man front, three linebackers, and a corner walked up here to the tight inside. So that's effectively eight defenders in the box. And he's supposed to read this edge defender. And in this zone scheme, if he stays out and up, you're going to give back this way to the running back. If he steps down inside, that's when he's going to pull it. And we know that's what he wound up doing. But watch this. So theoretically, you have two combos happening on your offensive line. Center and backside guard are off the tackle up to that linebacker. And then left tackle, left guard, theoretically, are comboing up to that linebacker. So that if you wind up giving this way, you got blockers and numbers back into the um, backside of the formation. But Alabama gets penetration, so Auburn does not combo here off that tackle the way they should. A linebacker shoots the gap because of their formation. And the end, it's not blocked, is all right there. So how does the play work when Alabama has numbers? It really works because you're doing your job here. You're penetrating doing your job here. But I think this player is not doing his job. And what he does, he steps down inside, and he's the last contained there for Alabama. So you have three players that have penetrated – and one unblocked at the point of attack, but because the last guy is out of place and steps inside instead of staying outside and giving the quarterback a give read, now he keeps it and there's just nobody left. Here's a counter play for Alabama to score. Show it one side, comes out the backside the other way. I just thought I'd show you this. Now you might say, you know, what's the point of a counter play to start one side, it slows the play down, and then you're going back the other way. Why would the quarterback open here and then give it back going that way? Because if you go straight handoff and you run power or something or zone this way, it's going to happen quicker, right? But I'll show you, you're trying to get people out of position with that action in the backfield. So for the quarterback, just by opening this way and running back, stepping here to this side, you've already influenced two Auburn players to move that way, two next-level defenders who could stop this play. So now by, again, opening, running the counter, and now giving it back this way, you've moved a couple defenders over here, make it farther for them to run to have to get over here to affect this play. Made it easier on your lineman to get up and make contact and affect him a little bit. And so now your running back can get out here and just take on the edge of the defense without worrying about getting run down from behind. So that's the purpose of the counter. Here's the big interception. Auburn tries to go deep corner to a three-receiver side. And they're not on the same page in terms of how this route is going to finish. And that's why the throw is behind the receiver. Now in this shot, what you can't see are the safeties who are back up top on third and long. So they're effectively going man with a safety uh, over the top over here to this three receiver side. So there's a lot of people there and the route, you know, they're clearing and running the corner, bring him across and the outside receiver is getting gone. So he's just going to win on a go route or clear it out for that corner to come across there. Here's what I'll show you. You can see now there's one of the safeties back deep. There's another back deep here for Auburn. And so the receiver, when he cleared and looked ahead at that safety, he could see him sitting there. And so the receiver's right here. He's breaking his route off 
horizontally to the sideline, side making it flat. He does not want to take his route up because all it does is it closes the gap with that safety, makes it easier for the safety to make a play on the ball. So when he breaks this off flat, quarterback throws it flat out here to the first down stick. It's a catch and a big play. The quarterback throws it up the field, whereas the receiver was going to stay away from the safety. Ball's thrown up, and the safety is the one who comes and picks it off. So the receiver's right. Here's just taking a one-on-one. You, know, you see that pre-snap, a little bit of a look there from the quarterback. Did a nice job. So lots of different things can lead you to this in terms of taking that one-on-one. You know, it's a first and 10 play, and they go 3-3 three, three or 3-4 three, defense right there, but it's really 3-3 three, three nickel. And, you know, the quarterback is seeing a safety in the middle of the field. Ball's on the right hash, so the safety is – shaded to the side of the field where you're thinking about taking this one-on-one, they're purposely putting him there to help over the top. But watch how they run it. It's not a straight go route. It's a little out move. And quarterback's going to pump this thing just a little bit. I don't know how effective it is on this guy because he's locked in a man-to-man coverage. But somehow, even though there's a pump fake to the outside, his eyes are here the whole time, the safety that was over the top just really stayed deep. So he just backpedaled, stayed deep. He was going to do anything but give up a home run. And that's what left a little bit of space on the out and up for the quarterback to fit it in there. And it's tight, and it's a really perfect throw. Right here on the goal line, you have bunch receivers for Alabama on third and goal, and Auburn's matching that. They're going to jump into man-to-man responsibilities. They still get one open, though. We'll show you how it happened. So you go back, look. On the snap... The receiver who caught the football is actually the third receiver. Out, he, he's the farthest outside. But they're going to bring the tight end across and hook up. They're going to run a flat with a flat route with the inside receiver. And his third guy is going back inside up into the back of the end zone, trying to confuse the man-to-man responsibilities. Auburn reads the initial snap pretty well. You see the tight end who becomes the second receiver Gets matched up right there with that number two defender. They pass off this switch route really well, and the outside defender is going to jump on it. And what you get is um, the receiver who actually caught the football matched up with that safety on the inside. It's exactly the matchup they wanted. So there you can see he's jumping into it. He just hesitates on running with him to the back of the end zone. And so when you see uh, the other angle, Again, they're covering each responsibility that it, you know where they're supposed to. It's just a matter of running with him and just a little bit of hesitation, and they get exactly what they want and a perfect throw to the outside away from the defender. Touchdown. A lot of one-on-one winning routes in this game for both teams. Auburn's 6'5 receiver matched up against a corner. The key here is the throw. Big, tall guy. He's covered really well. But the position of throw only gave him an opportunity. It's just a perfect throw here. They pump fanked him early. The corner did not jump on that. He just turned and ran with him. So it's good coverage. Wasn't giving up the back pylon. But this spot throws the ball out of bounds. Only his guy can get it. And he goes up and makes a play. You know, in so many of these iron bowls, it's, you know, a linebacker, a defensive lineman, a a running back who kind of steals the show. But this was a throw-and-catch game. And I think that's what made it so much fun to watch as both teams had quarterbacks just putting the ball on the money, receivers making plays, and really, you know, the turnovers and a couple things in the kicking game were the big difference. There's not a lot to say on this play other than it's just a phenomenal individual play by Waddle. Auburn is matched up in man-free. Okay, so against four receivers – And uh, they've got a free safety in the middle of the field who you can't see. And you can see the man-to-man matchup they respect the most is Waddle, who they're giving all this cushion to right now. And he's just really running that stop-go. I think he's reading it against his coverage. I think you have the option to run go routes, but if they give you all that cushion, you're going to stop. Protection breakdown, but the quarterback gets it out. And so, again, because of the cushion, he broke the route off, come back to the quarterback and catch the football. And now it's just a foot race. Just an incredible individual play by a guy who's the fastest guy on the field. 
Here he is again, two-man route, wide side of the field, seven-man protection, throw and catch. Uh, Auburn kind of made the read simple for what Alabama had called. They are two-by-two two receivers, but the tight end staying in to protect, the running back staying in to check and protect. So quarterback knows a maximum protected. They give him a four-man front, three linebackers, but they're really only bringing five. Two linebackers stayed. But pre-snap, you know, they line up in what looks like man-to-man coverage with a safety getting back in the middle of the field. It's man-free. Sees one edge rusher coming. Knows again, though, it's max protect. Plenty of protection. Not worried about it. And then it's just a matter of the accuracy of the throw because man-to-man, you know the corner is going to be on the outside route. He's just got to win, and i got to put it in the right spot. And, you know, earlier in the game, it's a similar deal. They're running a deep corner route, and the quarterback was on a different page, and he put the ball downfield. It was picked off. Receiver had seen the safety and broken it off flat. Here's an example. They're on the same page. He throws it to the sideline, and you get a completion. This is one of those where if you complete this slant right here, he may catch it, break a tackle, break another, and score. But this guy has the hot hand on this particular day, so a good decision by the quarterback to put it out there, give him an opportunity. Watch Whitlow split the defense right here. This zone run. Nobody on the next level. Huge play. You think, well, how can that happen? But I think there's a lot of design involved to get defenders where they wanted them. Alabama with three down linemen, and this is more like a 3-4 defense because you do have a nose guard, so it's really like a true 3-4. But look at the formation for Auburn. They have tight end, H-back, and receiver all to this uh, right side, and then are motioning out of that, pre-snap, running out of it. So what it does is pre-snap, it rotates this safety back across, another one up to this side. So this motion on the play is going to kind of remove safety. It's going to run one out of there knowing the ball is coming back this way. You're going to remove a next-level defender. The other thing that happens is the combo between the tackle and the right guard works really well. You know, this block does have to happen on the edge, obviously, but when you get two here up to this linebacker, and that's a perfect job handing it off, now you've got a hole created between the tackle and the guard for the running back to step through. And the other part of this, the only next-level defender here is the corner who's unblocked. He takes an outside angle, not an inside. Tries to recover, but it's too late. He's hitting the hole going full speed. And so good design, good execution, and it was blocked perfectly. First and 10, no safety help, so zero coverage. Alabama takes advantage of it, and they throw the go route for a touchdown. Now that's a receiver going up, making a play. It's not like he got wide open, but he did beat him. If you look at what Auburn's doing, high risk, high reward. So it's first and 10, right? And Alabama puts in that extra tackle who wears number 85 into the ball game, makes it look like they're going to run the ball on first and 10. So Auburn with three down, they walk everybody in and decide we're going to play the run and go take a chance on man-to-man. And pre-snap right away, quarterback knows there's nobody in the middle of the field. This is absolutely the matchup I'm going to take, and he tries to pump it out there to him. Just give him a chance. Beat him, and the receiver makes a play. And a little wildcat play, physical play on third down on the goal line. Speed sweep, the key block is the right tackle up on the linebacker. Because that kind of seals things inside, he outruns an unblocked defensive end to get up there where it's one-on-one against the safety. Big hit. You see what Auburn's doing? He has a read here. You're pulling the right side guard uh, around to the left to block out in front. And I, I believe that in most cases, your uh, Wildcats reading that defensive end. If he were to fly down in here, he's going to pull the ball and follow this block around and maybe score himself. Whereas if he just kind of hangs there, we're going to give it. That's what happens. Here's the block of the tackle coming up as he steps up to the linebacker, going to unblock that defensive end. Auburn had a tight end extra tackle in the game. They're out on the edge. 
And what you're counting on is for this to happen, just like they've done. One block, two block, get him to the edge. Now you want your faster player to outrun that defensive end to the edge, and he gets that done. And deliver some contact. Now, a lot of people ask, what's the difference between a defensive player targeting a guy versus an offensive player targeting a guy? And I'm not saying this should be called offensive targeting. I'm just saying, based on the rule and what they're trying to eliminate, it is players leading with the crown of their helmet into the head of another player. And I guess the difference being right here, he lowered it enough that his head's really kind of underneath his chin. He puts his shoulder in his chest and the guy's helmet just pops off. All right, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, look, let me know what you think. If you have any questions or if I got something wrong, uh, feel free to comment. I always enjoy reading through the comments. And you can tell me what you think also anywhere on social media. I am Radio Wyatt on Instagram and Twitter. And uh, check out my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Radio Wyatt. There are a lot of radio content there on Facebook also. Also, thanks to Renaissance Bank for sponsoring these videos that make it possible. Renaissance Bank, the best bank in the South. Check them out at renaissantnation.com. All right. See you next time. See ya.